Hey guys, David here and welcome to another video. Today we're going to take my Dark Art CNC here and upgrade it to be an epic laser cutter. To do this I have partnered up with Opt Lasers and their 40 watt laser cutting head. This thing is absolutely awesome. It simply magnetically detaches from my CNC. I can cover it up, use my CNC as I normally would and then if I want to laser something Take off the cover, attach the laser, I built a little dust shoe attachment here, and boom, I have a laser cutter. It is as simple as that. Everything is already hooked up. I have air here for the air assist, all the power is hooked up, everything, and it also makes use of the same muscle controller that I use for the CNC functionality. This really simple, quick changeover means that this truly is a two-in-one machine now. But before we get into the weeds, let's back up a little bit. Opt Lasers actually reached out to me quite a while ago while I was in the middle of kind of designing and building the CNC and I told them uh, I'd be really into trying new products, but not right now, I'm too busy. But then after this machine was done, they reached out again and uh, I decided to give it a shot, try out uh, their laser cutting head as I've heard great things about it. And so they sent it over to me uh, to make a video, but uh, they were really generous with how much time I had to make this video. It's been many months since uh, they sent it over and I had some time to play around with it. It took me a while to get it all set up and then I used it on a couple of projects, a couple of guitars and to kind of really get an idea of what it is like to, to use this product. Now they make a couple of different options for the laser cutting head and uh, a lot of them are more focused towards engraving which is probably mostly what you will be doing on your CNC. Like you're going to be using the CNC to cut stuff and then you might want to engrave some uh, decorative pieces on there or you might want to engrave some serial numbers or something like that and they have some uh, decently affordable options for that as well. Um, but what I have here is not an engraving head at all. Uh, I mean, it can do engravings as well, but it is a very powerful 40 watts of true laser output uh, cutting head. The model is the PL3D XT8. It's a mouthful, uh, but it uh, doesn't really matter. And uh, compared to uh, like your standard cheap diode laser, uh, that I've uh, s reviewed some of these uh, on this channel. This is in a completely different class. It is much more what you would expect from like a CO2 laser cutter in terms of power. Now it is still a diode laser and comes with all the pros and cons of that, uh, mainly being a different wavelength. Like for example, you cannot cut clear acrylic with this, which you could do with a CO2 laser. But on the other hand, there's a lot of advantages to blue diode lasers as well. Uh, for one, you don't have a giant glass tube that you need to worry about. Some examples of what I've cut is here, this uh, will be a guitar top. This is five millimeter thick uh, box elder uh, that's uh, kind of similar to maple. And uh, I was running at like 700 millimeters a minute at full power in a single pass and it cut through cleanly, perfectly. That is really fast for cutting on most other uh, laser cutters uh, that I've reviewed here. Uh, I would be going at maybe like two, 300 millimeters a minute and do multiple passes. So this is really fast and by going a bit slower you could easily cut thicker pieces as well. What you can also do uh, really well with this is some deeper engravings. Uh, not just kind of marking the surface layer uh, but actually like cutting material away. Uh, one area where this is really interesting to me is for inlay. I've done a little bit of a uh, test here on ebony. For one I had no luck whatsoever cutting even very very thin ebony on my previous uh, laser cutters. This one has no problem. Uh, this is a very, very dense wood. And while it is dark, so it absorbs a lot of light, it takes a lot of power to actually properly cut it. But here, that was not an issue at all. And I was able to uh, kind of etch into it and do some quite deep engravings. Now here you have to be a bit careful not to char and burn it, which I might have done here on a couple of occasions. But if you uh, choose your power and speed settings right, you might have to do one or two passes. You can easily uh, like, etch away a couple of millimeters of depth and uh, what this allows you to do is then well cut out a different piece out of some veneer and then inlay it in. 
Now usually I do this process on my CNC, which works great. However, one big downside of CNC uh, inlay is that you cannot do sharp corners uh, because an anvil is just so wide. Even a very, very tiny anvil, and I go down to like 0.3 millimeter anvils if I have to, is still quite a bit larger of a radius than what you can do with a laser cutter. And it is also a lot faster if you are doing very small uh, details, as these tiny end mills take forever to cut anything. Now, this technique of deep engraving on wood will work great on uh, species of wood that do not have pronounced grain. Because if you have a lot of grain, then uh, the lighter uh, parts of the grain will uh, burn away much quicker and the darker parts not as fast, uh, leaving you a very uneven bottom. So you might cut all the way through in some parts and barely engrave in other parts. So things like ebony, this will work great. I haven't tried it, but I'm assuming mahogany would also work great since it has a very fine grain. Uh, but something like ash, for example, I uh, would not expect this to work. Now, if you are engraving on things, then uh, this head here has two power modes. One is the full power mode and one switches it over to half power. And uh, this just means that you have a little bit more of fine control as uh, usually like engraving on wood, for example, I usually run maybe 10% power in half power mode. So actually like 5% of total power at somewhere around uh, 1 to 2,000 millimeters a minute. Uh, so uh, for engraving, like how fine you can adjust the smallest power is almost <laughs> the limitation here, which is uh, kind of funny. It goes to the all the way to that point where there is no power setting, even uh, setting it to 0.1%, which is the minimum power setting, uh, you will still mark the wood. So if you are uh, trying to, I don't know, find your origin point on the wood or uh, see what, what your outline is by using the laser as kind of a point to follow, which works quite well on like lower powered machines. Uh, you just set the power low enough and you can see the spot, but it doesn't affect the wood here. You, here that doesn't work. Uh, even if you have it at the very lowest power, it will leave a mark. But great power does come with great weight. And for a laser cutting head, this is very heavy. Uh, now, depending on how you mount it on your CNC, that is not an issue at all. I mean, most of the time the CNCs are designed to move around a heavy spindle. Uh, so putting uh, on a heavy laser is not a big issue. However, the way I designed my uh, CNC, the only real good place to mount it uh, was on the dust shoe mount. And this is not the most rigid component, it's just 3D printed, as it well, was supposed to just hold the dust shoe. What this means is that when I start to accelerate faster, uh, because this is not super rigid, I can see some ringing. So anything above uh, like 1000 millimeters a minute for kind of complicated paths or 2000 millimeters a minute for just scanning back and forth uh, is too much for this machine just because it starts to shake the laser head. I imagine with a la lighter laser head like the engraving focused one, I could probably go slightly faster, but really this is an issue of my uh, CNC design uh, and not really their uh, laser implementation. It has nothing to do with the laser itself. Now, for engraving other materials apart from wood, one thing that I do a lot of with my laser, and the main thing I used the laser until I uh, got this one, is uh, kind of engraving my logo and serial numbers on the back of my uh, guitar electronics covers. I make those out of aluminum, then spray paint them black and etch away uh, the lettering uh, with the laser. Now for this, uh, once again, there's more than enough power. I'm using a fairly low power setting here uh, in the engraving mode, so the lower power mode, uh, and just scanning back and forth at 2000 millimeters a minute. You could also very easily uh, etch away uh, anodizing on aluminum, uh, which on some lower powered lasers uh, can be a bit of an issue. You need decent amount of power to properly burn away the anodizing, but no problem at all with this one either. Now, one other difference in terms of engraving between this uh, large, uh, kind of more cutting focused uh, laser head versus their uh, smaller only engraving specific head is the spot size. This one has pretty decent uh, spot size uh, for just a diode laser compared to the uh, cheap lower powered uh, Chinese ones. Uh, it is still smaller spot size. However, their uh, engraving focus one 
once again has an even smaller spot size, which just means that you can resolve that much finer details. Now it also means that if you are doing scanning, you might need actually more lines per millimeter for it to look detailed. So it is kind of a trade-off. Now, before we wrap this up here, I want to talk a bit about all of the accessories around that I built. And this is kind of also why this took so long for me uh, to get it set up. Just connecting it, uh, that is a fairly simple affair. Now, there was a slight issue with mine where uh, the cable that they provided had one of the connectors swapped. So uh, that resulted in uh, quite a bit of troubleshooting as it just didn't really work in the beginning. But uh, that was, well, with the uh, support staff, fairly easily resolved. And I just had to swap two of the connectors. But then, uh, since I am using this for cutting as well, I knew I'd want some sort of smoke exhaust. Now, this is still somewhat work in progress, uh, but let me quickly show you what I've got here. So. Here at the dust shoe for my CNC, I uh, 3D printed an adapter plate that also uh, attaches to the same magnets and then uh, kind of uh, goes around the laser here. This means that it can capture all the smoke at the laser and then be sucked here at the same port as I would use for my dust extraction. Now, of course, I don't want to use my dust extraction to suck the smoke away because, well, it doesn't have any smoke filters or anything like that. Now, we did consider adding like a carbon filter to my uh, dust collection, but there's a whole host of other issues of the smoke in the uh, system there and, uh, well, getting a, a carbon filter to fit it. So I quickly abandoned that project. Uh, instead, I am using some ducting here and an inline fan to just vent it outside. Now, my ducting is quite long, so the fan I got is, well, it is a fairly strong inline fan. Uh, however, with all of the ducting, it still, it does move air, but not quite enough to be truly effective. The thing that compounds this issue is that uh, you're basically always using the air assist, uh, especially when cutting, uh, and it does, well, push out a bunch of air where this is sucking in the air. So if uh, it's not pulling enough air, uh, it, the air assist is stronger and will just blow the smoke out. And then once it, the cut is done and it turns off, you can actually see how the smoke is getting sucked back in. So I guess I just need to get a, a stronger inline fan and then this system should work quite well. Now it's never gonna get all of the smoke and if I were to do uh, laser cutting all the time then well, I wouldn't use the system. I would get a dedicated laser cutter uh, or have an enclosure for this machine or something like that. But for kind of just using it to cut something periodically, there's not that many pieces of a guitar where I actually want to use a laser cutter. Uh, cutting out the headstock veneer is one of the pieces uh, that is easier with the laser instead of the mill. And uh, here, uh, cutting out this uh, top also proved a bit easier as it has some very small details where I would have had to use a tiny tool. But other than that, for the most part, I'm just kind of using the engraving function for some stuff. This is more just to augment uh, this CNC machine, which 95% of its time is using an end mill and not the laser. Then also to support the cutting, you need something to go underneath you can buy uh, these kind of uh, honeycomb uh, laser beds, uh, fairly cheap uh, from uh, China. However, getting a large enough one to cover my entire uh, build surface here, uh, shipped, that is quite expensive. So I was considered getting multiple smaller ones, but even that added up. So instead, what I did, uh, I went the DIY route. I got some uh, kind of expandable uh, hex mesh, uh, like aluminum hex mesh. This uh, I got from a composite supplier. It's actually intended to be used in like carbon fiber composites as a filler structure. And once you expand it, it also gives you that same uh, honeycomb mesh structure. It's not as sturdy and not quite as fine grained as the like purpose built ones, but combined with just some uh, U-channel aluminum uh, extrusions to go around and uh, two thin steel sheets uh, as a background material, this is essentially uh, pulls the same duty as more expensive uh, honeycomb laser beds. And I paid maybe like 60, 70 bucks uh, for all the materials here, whereas it would have cost me over 200 uh, to get uh, one from China. 
Now to control the air assist, I have a solenoid uh, that is controlled by the master controller. Uh, I'm just using the uh, same Festo uh, ones that I'm using for my like air for the uh, coolant as well as for my automatic tool changer for the CNC. Uh, I keep finding those used, uh, uh, same exact model uh, for very cheap. So I just bought some more and I'm uh, using those. After that, I have a simple flow uh, regulator as well as a kind of flow indicator. Uh, that way I can set uh, the airflow uh, to the appropriate uh, amount for whether I'm engraving or I'm cutting. And this also is connected through the laser dock. And this is an uh, optional add-on, but if you are using uh, the laser in kind of on a CNC where most of the time you're not using it, this is basically a must. This is the game changer as it just magnetically attaches and is repeatable, connects everything and just works. Being able to attach your laser just with one movement, no cables to plug in, no hoses to connect, that is what kind of makes the difference for me between this being an annoying gimmick uh, that I never actually end up using to something that is just convenient to use and uh, the easiest solution. To control the laser itself, I like to arm it and test it. I uh, think it might be just out of a screen or hidden, uh, but I added a little uh, CNC control uh, box that it comes with here uh, into the front panel. I just cut, cut a hole and screwed it in from the back. And uh, here I can arm and disarm uh, the laser. Uh, and that way uh, that is nice and safe. Then the final piece of the puzzle is Lightburn. That's the software I use to generate the G code that I then uploads to the muscle uh, to send and well to run the laser. And with that, I think I have rambled on for long enough. Uh, we have covered just about everything. If there's something you missed, please do leave a comment down below. And in case you are kind of disappointed that I didn't give you detailed test results uh, of all the materials you can cut and how deep you can cut it at which speed, well, uh, I'm sorry, but kind of too busy building guitars uh, to make that kind of videos. But uh, uh, you're lucky that they are popular enough that I'm sure that you will find a lot of other YouTube videos that go more into detail on that. Uh, just more wanted to show you how I use it. Uh, for me, it kind of it has more than enough power for basically anything I would want to throw at it. The only things it cannot cut are just more due to the limitation of what a blue diode laser can do. And with that, I want to give a big thanks once again to OptLasers for sending this over uh, to upgrade my CNC with. They've been really pleasant to work with. And uh, I highly suggest that you go check them out below. You can also use my uh, coupon code uh, here uh, to get free shipping as well as 20% off of any accessories you buy uh, in addition to your laser. And if you want to see more projects that I'm doing with this laser, what I'm using it for, go check out my Instagram. I will share plenty of more reels and stories there of what I'm up to. With that said, thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And until next time.